It's a beautiful day out here, man. Oh my goodness. I'm gonna wait for a couple people to log in. I actually was gonna post this, but uh, the Lord just told me to go ahead and do a video because this is really good. He gave this to me in prayer. He said, Christians are still making sacrifices to idols. And uh, obviously I was thinking about Moses and the golden calf and then what the children of Israel were doing. So let me show you what God gave me this morning. A lot of people, right, they don't want help. Because oftentimes, if you really want help, you got to get some truth. And the truth often requires some repentance, and it often requires people to make some sacrifices that they don't want. And I've noticed in the day and age we're living in, and I don't think it's no surprise to anybody, many people, they don't like truth. They rather have somebody tell them what they want to hear, right? People go to marriage counseling, and they don't go to marriage counseling to find out ways to better their marriage. They're going to marriage counseling hoping that the counselor tells their spouse that they're right. That's really where their mindset is at. It's not like, oh, let's go to marriage counseling and figure out, you know, what we can do to make this marriage better, how we can sacrifice to make this marriage better. Let's go to marriage counseling so you can find out that I'm right. So what God showed me is people have made their egos and their intellects and their way of thinking idols, right? My way of doing things, that's the only way to do it. And what ends up happening is you only surround yourself with people who are willing to bow down to that idol of your thinking. You've constructed this idol. And if someone doesn't bow down to it, all right, you run from them, you avoid them, you attack them. Let me give you an example. If somebody tells you the truth, you get offended and you get upset. If somebody tells you the truth, you want to attack them, you want to avoid them. If someone tells you the truth that's going to convict you or make you feel like you need to change or repent, you avoid them. And this is why you only call your friends and vent to your friends who are going to agree with you. You won't call that person who you know is going to tell you the real truth because people don't want the truth. They want somebody to reinforce and validate what they're already doing. I don't want to feel convicted. I don't want to have to change what I'm doing. I want somebody to agree with me and tell me what I'm doing is okay. So what ends up happening like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, I'm going to throw you in the fire if you don't bow down to the idol of my thinking. I'm, and then what ends up happening is you've surrounded yourself with people who only think like you and people who only agree with you. And the result of that is you end up sacrificing things to these idols. Marcus, what are you talking about? You sacrifice your marriage to the idol of your pride. You sacrifice uh, your, your relationships and even some of your blessings because you're so stuck on your way of doing things that when God sends you a word, when God sends you a prophet of correction, you, you run from it, you reject it, and you say, no, I'm only going to surround myself with people who think like me, who agree with my way of doing things. And so you're sacrificing things to the idol of your pride, the idol of your intellect, the idol of your way of doing things. And what are those things? You're sacrificing your marriage. You're sacrificing your children. You're sacrificing your future and your dream. And sometimes you don't even realize you've made that sacrifice until the divorce papers are signed. Sometimes you don't even realize that you've made that sacrifice to that idol until you see your kids are just as messed up and as jacked up as you were and they're living, um, you know, a little, they're a little bit older now and they're making the same decisions, having the same issues in their marriage because you just thought your way of doing things was right. And by the time you found out your way of doing things were wrong, you taught your kids and you gave them an example that was bad and they followed in it. And you don't even see what you've sacrificed to these idol gods. Sometimes your way of thinking and your way of doing things, it needs to be smashed and it needs to be brought down. That's why you don't need to be running from someone who's trying to correct you. That's why you don't need to be running from correction. The Bible says those that God loves, he corrects. He's correcting you, he's rebuking you because he's, he loves you for your good. And yes, sometimes when that correction comes, you're not gonna wanna hear it. Your flesh is gonna crawl, why? Because your flesh wants to do what your flesh wants to do. And some of you are making sacrifices to the idol of your flesh. Let me give you, give you another example. Your flesh tells you, oh, go ahead and date this guy. Go ahead and date this girl. And the Spirit of God says, no, 
and the word of God says no, but you go ahead and you follow the idol of your flesh and you know what ends up happening? You sacrifice that future relationship. You sacrifice that beautiful maybe marriage that God had for you because you lean on to your own way of doing things. And so God can't bless you with, I always like to use Russell Wilson in the future, um, no offense to neither one of those guys, but God can't bless you with a Russell Wilson because you too busy entertaining a future. That idol, right, is blocking your blessing. So sometimes you're so proud. And you know what was so crazy? It's just like the idol with Dagon when they brought it. The Philistines uh, had it in front of the Ark of the Covenant and it kept on falling down. Some of you keep trying to pick up that idol and dust it off. You done seen a million times that your way of doing things is not working. You done seen a million times that you jumping from relationship to relationship is not working. You done seen that you've been avoiding admitting, man, my mama was right. Man, the pastor was right. Man, the word of God is right. And you just keep fighting it and fighting it. And that idol keeps falling. But you do like the children of Israel and you pick it up and you try to nail it down and make it stand. You keep dusting that guy off. You keep dusting that girl off. You keep dusting that situation off that you're supposed to leave alone. And what you don't see, man, this is so good for the Holy Spirit, is you're sacrificing your future to that idol. You're sacrificing your children to that idol. You're sacrificing the blessings that God gave you. It's like Esau, you know, giving up his birthright for a temporary hunger to satisfy a temporary hunger. And what's sad is sometimes it's not like how the children of Israel would sacrifice to these idols. Sometimes you don't see that you're sacrificing to these idols till years later. You don't see it until you got divorced and you was just so, oh, you, I, I was so good in my marriage. And you're thinking nobody could correct you. Nobody could tell you maybe you're not a good wife. Maybe you're not a good husband. Maybe you're not a good parent. And you got offended and you rejected all. No, I am. And you surrounded yourself with people who would only bow down to your idol. Tell me what I want to hear. And if you don't tell me what I want to hear, I'm going to throw you in the fire. But then a couple years later, you see that they were right. Now that, 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 that husband or that wife or that situation is gone and you don't know a good thing till it's gone, but it took you a couple of years and now you're bitter and now you're angry. They moved on and they're married with somebody else and you're still here single and you didn't want to, you went to two or three different relationships and the same problem kept popping up and you used to always say, man, it's them, it's them, it's them. But now you keep having issues with everybody that you date, but because you had that idol up of pride and nobody could correct you and tell you about yourself. Now you done sacrifice your youth and you sitting there 50, 60 years old looking for a relationship, looking for a marriage when you could have had one, when you could have been blessed. If you had just destroyed that idol and said, you know what, I'm going to listen. I'm going to re receive some correction. What, what can I do to change? I see so many people do it. You just keep on fighting. I'm going to do it my way. I'm going to do it my way. And you build up that idol. And I'm only going to surround myself with people who will bow down to my idol with me. And I'm sacrificing my future. I'm sacrificing my children because then they grow up with generational curses. And they grow up affected by my bad decisions and by my bad choices. And they grow up, my daughter's dating the same kind of guy I was dating. My, my sons are treating women the same way that I did. They're struggling with the alcohol. They're struggling with the drugs because I exposed them to the idol in my house. Do you understand? what I'm, Man, this is so good. We throw those people in the fire that God sends to correct us because we're so proud and, and we, so, we just think, oh, our ways are just better. You know why the devil got cast out of heaven? Because he exalted his way of thinking and his feelings above God. And so many times we do that. It's like we're trying to build this, this tower of, of Babel with our intellect. And yes, I'm just going to do it my way. And then there's nothing but confusion and misery. How many times is it going to take for these idols in your life, whether it's a relationship, whether it's your way of doing things or your pride, how pride goes before destruction and the fall. How many times is it going to have to fall down for you to humble yourself under the mighty hand of God and repent and say, you know what? My way of things, my way of doing things isn't working. My stubbornness, my way of thinking is not working. My marriage is miserable and I refuse to change. I refuse to sacrifice. It's not working. I need something different. The way I'm dealing with my kids, I'm hopping from relationship. Nothing that I'm doing is working. When will you humble yourself and say, Lord, teach me, show me? Or will you continue to sacrifice your future, your destiny, your children, your blessings to the idols 
in your life. Be blessed, be encouraged in Jesus' name.